Hello, everybody. We'll just give a few seconds for people to filter in and get their audio settled. Uh, it looks like we have a critical mass and people as people file in I'll make sure that I type all of this in uh, in the chat so it's accessible later on but welcome to today's webinar. Um, before we get started, I just want to cover a few quick logistics about this platform in particular. This is Zoom webinar, not Zoom meeting. So uh, to start with, the most notable difference is that you'll be muted and you can't be seen. So you don't have to worry about interrupting us. Any dogs barking, nothing like that will end up affecting the webinar. Uh, but that does mean to interact, you've got two main ways. There's the chat and the Q&A. Uh, the chat, if you... Uh, type something in there, it's going to default to just the panelists. So if you want everyone to see what you've written, you want to select from the drop down there, all panelists and attendees. Uh, if you have a question for the panelists, we're going to ask that you put that in the Q&A function, which is a bottom at the uh, bottom, a button at the bottom of your dashboard. Uh, you can ask those anonymously. Everyone can view the question and you can comment and add your own upvotes to those if you so choose. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded, so you can use the same link that you use to access this live version in order to watch the recording later on today. So without further ado, I want to hand it off to Ben from Salesforce. All right. Thanks so much, Mike, uh, and welcome everyone uh, to this webinar on connecting the admissions and student journeys more seamlessly. And as Mike said, my name is Ben Rhodes, and I am on the education cloud team at salesforce.org. Uh, now, on the next slide, uh, I do need to remind you that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Uh, so if you are making any purchasing decisions, please make those decisions based off of technology and information that is currently available today. But with that, on the next slide, I just want to say one more huge thank you. Uh, thank you for all the tremendous work you do as educators to support our students, families, faculty, and staff in today's new climate. Uh, and we at salesforce.org are just so inspired by your resiliency right now. Uh, and we are more committed than ever to being your partner and innovating together. Uh, so on the next slide, let's take a quick look at today's agenda. Now I'm gonna kick things off with just a brief introduction to salesforce.org and specifically how we are thinking about engagement across the learner life cycle. Uh, but then I'll quick quickly hand things off uh, to the team at the Frank Batten School, uh, who will show us all of the amazing things they are doing to connect the admissions, onboarding, and current oh. Little connection interruption from Ben there. We'll give him a moment to see if he pops back in. Mike, why don't I wrap up the agenda on behalf of Ben while we wait for him to sure. show okay? Sure. So as Ben was saying, we're going to get a live demo from both the amazing team at the Frank Batten School at UVA, uh, as well as myself, uh, as Kirsten Rauscher at Salesforce, where we're going to take a sneak peek at Admissions Connect, our newest product. We hope to save time at the end for Q&A, but if we don't have time for live Q&A, uh, as Mike put in the chat, please do leverage the chat feature. Uh, there are six or five of us on the call and we are happy to jump in and try and answer as we go or follow up with you at the end if necessary. So here we wanna uh, just kind of put Kind of some context into what we hope to achieve today. So we want you to reimagine the admitted student experience. The work that the UVA team has done and that are going to show is really going to help highlight that period of once a student raises their hand and submits their deposit and enrolls, and we want to back up what the student and seamless experience could look like from the time they actually raise their hand and inquire. 78% of students are expecting that personalization, whether those are in messaging and communication that we're going to learn from the Batten team, but also from the digital experience they have on your website and on personalized communities that we're going to see live as well. Salesforce can really help you achieve that level of personalization at scale. And so we're going to look across the entire life cycle from inquiry all the way through enrollment and onboarding uh, together today. And there we have Ben. So I will let Ben take this slide. 
All right. Thank you, Kirsten. I uh, appreciate you picking right up, uh, hopefully, where I left off. So sorry, everyone, uh, the, the joys of uh, live webinars. So um, with that, um, let me just dive right back into my my uh, little script notes. Uh, so, um, you know, we are all about supporting a connected learner journey. And so for us, learner success means that students are supported at every moment throughout their applicant onboarding and student journeys with a success team. And uh, students feel connected and they know where to go for help. They aren't burdened by technology gaps and staff are not limited by those gaps in providing help. So ultimately students are guided to a life plan that is fulfilling. And so on the next slide, we'd love to show you a little bit about how AdvisorLink helps to support that journey. So at the heart of a connected journey is AdvisorLink, uh, which you'll be hearing a lot more about today. And so within AdvisorLink, success plan templates enable trackable onboarding plans for students, and these can be customized to specific student populations. Admission staff can team up with financial aid, housing, and other staff to ensure that students know where and who to go to as they prepare for life as a student. As a result, admitted students have a clear plan and detailed guidance uh, in the form of a learning journey, preparing them for life as a student. And so then on the next slide, uh, let's look exactly at how onboarding is just a part of a fully supported recruitment and admissions journey. So Education Cloud for Recruitment and Admissions gives your team the tools needed to effectively attract and then engage prospective students throughout the enrollment funnel, helping students feel a sense of belonging at each and every step. With a full lifecycle CRM for recruitment and admissions, your team needs only one system to increase personalization and support, and that includes in the application phase, uh, which we'll actually be talking a little bit more about later. Uh, so on the next slide, Let's take a look at how this connected experience ultimately sets up a fully supported, supported learner experience. And so the solutions that you see here on this slide are empowering institutions to deliver connected and engaging experiences throughout the entire student journey. And this includes per personalized communications journeys for students, seamless navigation of support services, it's unified and proactive advising, and finally career readiness. Now, all of the uh, admissions and student experience parts working together is really what makes for a robust learner experience. And that's what's really so, so exciting about UVA Batten and that they are connecting all of these dots for both admits and current students. Uh, so on the next slide, I am thrilled to introduce you to today's presenters. Now we'll be starting with Courtney Lyson Snyder and Courtney is the Assistant Director of Admissions, handling many admissions operations at both the undergraduate and graduate levels, including the planning uh, of recruitment and ev events and student visits. And Courtney joined the Batten team after completing her Master's of Education in Higher Ed at UVA. And in normal times, you are very likely to see her at the many UVA sporting events throughout the year. Next up is Christine Nelson. And Christine is the Assistant Director of Academic Programs and the Registrar for the Batten School. She has been in this role for almost four years after spending four years in admissions at the UVA School of Architecture. Christine also has a Master's uh, of Education from the University of Georgia, and she enjoys assisting students through the enrollment management cycle from pre-admission to graduation. Next is Diane BC. B. Secker, and Diane has been with the Batten School for three and a half years as the Salesforce Application Manager, and she has recently been appointed as Director of IT. And congratulations, Diane. Uh, she was the Project Manager for one of the very first rollouts of AdvisorLink, and she's been using Salesforce tools very creatively in managing Batten students, staff, and faculty. Over the past 13 years, Diane has used Salesforce in private industry with a nonprofit organization and now in higher education. And now finally, last but not least, uh, at the end of today's webinar, you'll hear from Kirsten Sands Rauscher. And Kirsten is a lead solution engineer at salesforce.org and has more than 10 years experience in higher education and business schools, including roles as director of admissions at both Georgetown uh, and the University of Maryland's Robert H. School of Business. So that's the team. And now I am so excited to hand things over to Courtney and the Batten School. Take it away, Courtney. Thank you, Ben, for giving us the opportunity to share our story with the members of ACRO. 
Before we get started with talking about admissions, the new student transition, and our continual journey to improve our processes for students, it is important to give you some context about our particular organization. The Batten School is one of 12 different schools at the University of Virginia, located right here in Charlottesville, Virginia. As one of the smallest schools, we really do pride ourselves in our mission of developing leaders and generating new knowledge in the world of policy, all while cultivating a strong sense of community across our small student body. As a smaller unit under the UVA umbrella, we have our own faculty and staff on hand to handle everything from admissions to finance to student support. Of this Batten staff of about 47, I want to focus in on two of our units that work closely with new students. As you can imagine, we are a small school where uh, staff wear many different hats and many offices engage with new students. The admissions team works closely with students, sometimes over the course of several years, to get them to apply and attend Batten. While we admit students each spring, we review applications across our four programs over several months, and students may be accepting our offers in several rounds of admission that goes into late spring, early summer, in addition to those individuals who are admitted off the wait list up until the start of the semester. Once admitted, they need to connect with our academic affairs team to prepare them for the next two years while also staying connected to the admissions team to ensure they properly matriculate and meet the conditions of their admission. The academic affairs team consists of two student facing staff members who are part-time advisors to the over 400 current Batten students in all four programs. They also meet with students who are exploring the opportunity to apply to or accept their admittance to the Batten school as well as provide other services related to enrollment, study abroad, course scheduling, and other academic related support. As you can see from both descriptions, uh, we are a school that does not have a dedicated orientation staff member. Since we're a school that only admits students once a year each spring, we don't necessarily need that traditional full-time orientation staff team that a larger university would have that would plan multiple orientation sessions throughout the year. So this really does lead to a handoff wall each year as students move through two major phases of the new student transition without that dedicated middleman to handle all student inquiries and issues. Admissions typically assist students in that first part of the new student transition after they've been admitted to the Batten School but are still debating their final choice. We spend significant energy with each applicant to make necessary connections and help them decide if Batten is the right fit which naturally creates a natural first stop for many students to ask questions even after they decide to enroll. Once they accept the offer though, they unknowingly enter a new phase of the new student transition of the student accepted, but not yet a full-time student, where other departments at Batten should suddenly become the main points of contact to answer questions such as on pre-arrival pre tasks. Without this natural full-time staff member dedicated to solely orientation, this has prompted a few headaches and issues we face each year. For example, where should students go for questions? Um, within the last three weeks, I had a student who emailed me asking very specific registration questions and logistics regarding study abroad, even though they should be contacting academic affairs. And in the inevitable period of how should you handle a late addition to the class? Last year, our extended app cycle led students to accepting offers throughout July at a time that traditionally was fully out of admissions hands. And ultimately, multiple offices had to work to quickly catch up the student. So this last example really highlights the crux of our recent efforts. After our extended app cycle last year due to COVID-19 and in the continuing virtual nature of our operations this academic year, it led our team to really reconsider what happens when a student considers Batten and ultimately accepts the offer. This holds especially true for those individuals who are added to the class late and may have missed the traditional programming we have for students. Our goal was to refine and improve our process along these four metrics, the first of which is community. Batten's community is really a hallmark for our school and one of the top reasons we hear from new students on why they should choose our school. In the wake of a full year of virtual recruitment, how do we actually really keep engagement high by replicating the Batten community, not only in the typical recruitment cycle, but also throughout the summer to avoid the dreaded summer melt? 
Next, we had to consider communication. In the wake of Zoom fatigue and a year with flooded email inboxes, our team really had to consider what we were sending to new students and when. How do we streamline those messages in this new virtual age? And importantly, how do we automate communications to keep late additions to the class on track and not send them outdated, irrelevant information about welcome events? Third, we had to decide on the types of content we were delivering. With low attendance and even lower desire for more virtual events, how can we try and utilize Zoom events to our advantage to highlight our community while we also assembled asynchronous pre-recorded video content and FAQs to answer an increased demand for general program information? With these events and new content, how could we ultimately pair that with our larger communications plan so admitted students, as well as our new students, know where to go for questions? This also connected to our desire to watch for summer melt with assigning tasks and tailored success plans and help students focus on priority items. And finally, we had to consider our channel and the tools we had, our, had at our disposal. With an increasing demand for more information on the student experience even earlier in the process, we had to think through where students are seeking answers and where they access FAQs and pre-recorded asynchronous content on their schedules and in their time zones. Ultimately, we had to decide where could students go in one centralized place for information instead of going to several different web pages that always needed to be updated to find the answers while utilizing the tools we continue to gain expertise in over this last year, like Marketing Cloud. As you can see, there were several central challenges our team was confronted with. I'll now hand it over to Christine to talk about how we tackled them. Thank you, Courtney. As Courtney's already mentioned, we have no dedicated new student programming staff at Batten, and fall course enrollment is the main touch point that my area, the academic affairs team, has with these students. In terms of an official welcome as well, Batten's orientation for undergraduate students consisted of one half day session before classes began. And for our master's students, they have a two week uh, intensive academic preparation and orientation, which is also just prior to the fall courses starting. So our timing for a typical handoff from admissions to academic affairs team usually happens in June, which means Courtney's questions then start coming to our offices. So the main impetus for working toward this seamless handoff experience started with concern for our master's students who were new to Charlottesville. But we realized that providing a smooth transition experience for all of our student populations was increasingly necessary and expected as both Ben and Courtney have already mentioned. Once we also understood that a comprehensive plan would train students to look for information in a particular place, that became our driving force in revamping the, the conversion from admissions to academic affairs. So the response of our transition team to develop a comprehensive onboarding journey for students was threefold. First, we moved our information sessions closer to the admittance date rather than the acceptance or commitment deadline, giving earlier access to academic affairs and to student groups and organizations. Second, we created a communications plan that scheduled emails being sent to students to convey timely information that was less overwhelming than having one massive all-inclusive email. And third, we enhanced the new student information in what we'll, you'll hear me refer to as the Batten Student Portal or Student Portal. All three of these responses are interrelated and are all connected through Salesforce to address the challenges outlined by Courtney of finding different tools to communicate content and build community. These solutions were developed on the foundational changes instituted last year by the admissions team as the entire world shifted to online life. Our first response illustrates this perfectly. We knew our welcome content sessions would take place virtually as they had last year. So in addition to holding the sessions earlier in the decision cycle, we pre-recorded streamlined versions of the presentations and sent out emails which linked to the presentation to all admitted students the day after the live event. This provided a follow-up for students who were able to attend the live virtual session, as well as offering the same program information to students who were unable to attend live. So again, our first two responses are clearly interconnected with the earlier content sessions and the post-session emails as part of the larger communications plan for admitted and incoming students. 
The new email plan refined again what admissions had started last year by dividing this one all-inclusive information email into digestible chunks through a combined use of Salesforce and Marketing Cloud. We created email templates in Salesforce and programmed them to be sent as a student's status changed in the system. For example, as soon as students accept their offer, they receive a, we're so excited you've decided to join us email immediately. The following day, international students receive an email from me as their main advisor, letting them know that the very first step is to pay their deposit. And then once they matriculate into UVA's student information system, they receive another email outlining next steps of IT authentication necessary to access International Studies Office new I-20 request portal. So similarly, other emails are sent out to students with different profile attributes. Regardless of program, residency, or conditional admit status, students are receiving personalized messages that keep them on track with next steps. Additionally, as you can see in this slide, we utilize Marketing Cloud in order to send out emails which are more inviting and easier to navigate due to the ability to utilize a variety of layouts. Also, one of the effective features in Marketing Cloud is this call to action button. We know that many of us tend to skim emails. So by including these learn more buttons, we link students directly to the Batten Student Portal or to other important information. This leads me to our third response, enhancing the use of the student portal. I've been in my position for four years and the only non-enrollment question that I received from incoming graduate students during my first couple of years was one older student wanting to know what books she needed to purchase. Now it seems all students have a variety of questions as soon as they are admitted and they want answers at all hours of the day and as soon as possible, as Courtney's already mentioned. We knew we needed to expand access to information and it seemed logical to do so in a place we want students to frequent and use throughout their tenure at Batten anyway. I do want to reiterate once again that we have been making changes and adding various parts of what you will see in a moment every year since we started using Salesforce and Advisor Link. What began primarily as a place for students to schedule appointments and for staff to enter notes about those appointments has grown to include several student forms, an announcement capability through the chatter group feature, and the start of assigning tasks and success plans. However, as with any new system, there is hesitancy or downright reluctance from both students and staff to fully embrace the student portal. This year, we decided that the onboarding journey was the perfect time to really train incoming students to utilize this valuable resource. So circling back to our challenges of how students are getting information they need and from whom, we needed a place that centralized knowledge, which had been located on our website or sent to students in multiple emails linking to various UVA offices. Last year, Diane had started uploading some basic new student information in the portal, such as where to find UVA Zoom backgrounds or how to download statistical software required for our master's students. As we brainstormed the information each student group needed or even wanted based on historical questions we received, the new student FAQ section grew sixfold from seven entries last year to over 40 and counting this year. By continuing to point students to this resource and utilizing the portal for online requests through forms, we are hopeful that as we add tasks, students will use the portal to keep track of everything from uploading their photo for their student ID to reminders to apply to graduate in two years. Now Diane will show you what a newly admitted student is able to see in the Batten Student Portal. Thanks, Christine. Um, I am going to actually show you a live demo of our portal. This is just a picture of it with our sample student. It's not a real student, but uh, here we go. So uh, as Christine and Courtney told you, our over the last three years, our what started as our advising portal has grown into the place to go for students. And this actually came up from uh, when we first rolled out Advisor Link. The only thing on this portal was making appointments and tasks. And the day we rolled it out, we had a student who was a 67-year-old retired colonel. And she walked into my office and said, really, Diane, you're going to give me one more place to go just to make an appointment. So that's when I was like, aha, I'm going to put everything that students need over time. It didn't all happen overnight 
into this place. Now, this is what it looks like today for a new student. This is not unfamiliar to a lot of our prospects because we actually have prospects in Advisor Link who they see a pared down version of this. They see only advising appointments and with the admissions team only and FAQs. The moment they are admitted to the school and they accept the offer, they then see a larger palette of, of options here. So of course, if you're familiar with Advisor Link, it is just a seamless tool where they can quickly go in and see all of their advisors. They could sort by team. Our, our, our school is so small, they pretty much know who they wanna meet with, but they choose Courtney, they say it's through Zoom. I wanna talk about application questions and here's her availability. And I click the button and that appointment is made. So that is the first tab. The second tab, ebbs and flows, depending on what time of year it is and what program you're in, you, these, stay, these uh, forms stay up here all the time. These used to be paper or email, and some of them go through case management. Some of them go through other tools. The MPP internship agreement goes through opportunities and has a nice little workflow that approves it. It's, it's great. <laughs> so we have a lot of forms and it depends on what time of year it, it is depend, uh, shows what's there. Um, of course, Christine talked about our success plan. Courtney assigns a success plan to incoming students and they can go in, they, they get notified, but they can also go in and see. And I know that Noah has already entered his, his Batten bio. And by the way, it's linked to an FAQ that says, Here's some sample Batten bios if you wanna know what you should put in there. So I'm gonna move this right over to completed for Noah. Next, we just have a place, this is case management. Do you need help? Do you need to request a loaner laptop? And you can see your, your cases, that's just a, a standard place. We, I think in the last 12 months put, maybe a little bit more, we put in what we call announcements, which is really just chatter groups. And we have a chatter group for every cohort and also we have groups of graduate class of 2021, which would include everyone that's graduating. So they're combinations of this. We also allowed students to make groups out here for their, for their interest groups. Um, if they have a, you know, the, um, I think there's one down here. Uh, the Virginia Policy Review has a, a group in here. So students are using it. And then FAQs is what we talked about has, you can see all the different categories and you can search. However, this button is what is brand new right down here. Only class of 2023, ours is a two year program. Only class of 2023 can see this button. And what we decided to do as one of the big outcomes from this project was they could probably find all the things somewhere through all of this but what they re we really wanted to give them one place to go to find all of their new student stuff. So they can go to their new student FAQs, which takes them directly, if they're a graduate student, takes them directly to their graduate FAQs. They can go to the new student checklist. Um, there's resource videos, which links to a YouTube page where we have actually recorded, um, if they missed the academic session, um, how to use this portal. There's a video out there that's five minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> um, so if they miss anything or if there's instructions on how to register for class, they can see that. They can see a nice video message from the Dean. And if they are a graduate student, they see this button, which is life in Charlottesville. Our undergrads are rising third year UVA students. So they already know about life in Charlottesville. So they don't need to see that. So this secondary page along with this button here was really the culmination of all the work that Courtney and Christine did to help that new student get rid of summer milk, to help them feel connected, to help them feel part of the community, to help them find the answers to their questions really quickly. And you know what we have found um, starting with last summer and, and this incoming class, the students are so anxious to really go look at things they go, some students have already uploaded their photo up into the corner. We don't have Noah's picture there. But, um, some students are reading FAQs and putting their bio in already. We don't ask for it till August, but um, so the, they're going in and doing everything and trying everything out because this is, you know, 
they used to wait till they arrived on grounds in August, but now as Christine and Courtney said, they want info right away. So that is the brief tour of our portal and where we, uh, and how it changed as a result of this transition project. So where are we now and where are we headed is, is what this is about. We actually, we support from the prospect to the student to the alumni. Alumni can actually still go in and make appointments with our career services team if they haven't gotten a job yet or they need to rejob. Um, but so on the left are the things that we're already using. We're using higher ed architecture. We're taking applications for admissions to the Batten School. Uh, we obviously use Advisor Link and Marketing Cloud. We use case management in multiple places across the school. We have uh, IT and operations, facilities, admissions. Um, some of Christine's things go through case management, faculty case management. We probably have seven or eight places where we're using um, native case management. Communities, we have the, the student portal that I showed you. We also have a faculty community and a staff community. Um, we do a lot of form processing that, that feeds right into face, into a, Salesforce and creates a case or creates some other object that's needed. Sometimes um, can create uh, course enrollments. So we do that with applications for GTAs and things like that. And we also have the review and decision process in our current uh, Salesforce. So what is next for us? Our big next right here is Admissions Connect. We would like to uh, replace the way that students apply with uh, the native tool in Salesforce called Admissions Connect, which you're about to see. Um, we're actually enhancing the way we're doing events and linking them together because we have a lot of different kinds of events now. We don't have nearly as many in person and back to zero, um, but hopefully that will start to start to crisscross a little bit. But we had to become really good at event management and we didn't have people there to sign up on a piece of paper. We had to do things that would make it more automated. Um, as Christine and Courtney mentioned, we have automated targeted emails in place. One of our challenges, as Christine mentioned, was when somebody comes late, what email, what email do they still need to see? You know, we don't want to send them the one that's about the event that's already occurred, but we want to make sure they get all the right information. And then, of course, continuing to make that Batten student portal the place to go for everything that they need and drive them there with every message. You know, every every everything they need to do should be in that place. And now I'd like to hand it over to Kirsten. Thank you so much for that awesome demo. Okay, so hopefully I am uh, sharing my screen with you all now. And I really wanted to give, you know, take the opportunity to give everyone uh, a short demo of Admissions Connect. You know, the, the Batten team had highlighted that that is the next step on their Salesforce journey. We're certainly really excited for them to replace some of the native capabilities and customization that they've already built out in Salesforce to accommodate their admissions process. But with our new product, we hope that fits in and really helps solve that missing piece. So we saw that student community, we saw Noah and his ability to go in and engage and interact with content, his task list and many forms and a lot of the onboarding things that we all know applicants need to complete before they actually start on campus, hopefully on campus physically uh, this fall for everybody. But Admissions Connect is going to even back up and start that story even earlier. I had mentioned we want to start that story for Noah way at the time of, of admission. And we're going to do that through the eyes of Rachel. So Rachel is technically Courtney, who you all have already met already. And Rachel is going to really represent Courtney's role as the Assistant Director of Admissions. And we want to show what a demo of Admissions Connect could look like for Courtney and her small team. Because as Courtney mentioned, they're wearing a ton of hats. And we still want to create that personalized experience. We want to help create that single source of truth in the community for the student, but also on their CRM contact record for the staff. 
So a lot of what I'm going to feature in our next screen is really the staff side of Admissions Connect and seeing how we can create a more seamless and efficient process for Rachel and Courtney to navigate through all of the applications, get decisions out quickly and timely, and then enhance that community experience as a result. So as I jump into Salesforce, like I hope Courtney and Rachel are doing every single morning when they start their morning, we're gonna land on the homepage, which most of you on the call right now likely know that this is a completely customized space where you can have access to data that you're collecting across Salesforce, such as dashboards, reports, and even pulling in the Twitter account so that I can keep a pulse on what's happening at Batten, but also what's happening in the industry. I am going to navigate to my applications tab. And here, I want to really focus on the students that are applying to our public policy and leadership degree right here uh, for this fall. And I have no doubt that this list of records is a much higher volume than what I have here ready to demo. But we want to just show the flexibility where you can filter quickly down to records by program or by student type if you want to work look at domestic versus international just to help Courtney and her team drill down to the data that's most meaningful to them and helping them determine how to spend their time each and every day. Right here, we can see an application for Sophia. So Sophia will represent the NOAA of the story that we've heard so far. And Sophia is applying for the fall to the BA in Public Policy and Leadership. And it looks like her checklist is only 83% complete. I'm working with many, many students at the same time. So I don't always remember exactly who Sophia is at the time I see her name. So I'm gonna jump into her contact record, which is going to be that single source of truth that's been tracking and cultivating and grabbing data from not just her behavior in her community and on the application, but likely grabbing information through integrations with the student information system when she becomes a student or any event attendance and other things and behaviors that she might be having. So here we are on Sophia applicant single source of truth, AKA her contact record, another completely customizable space for you to track and store data that you want to know about your applicants. But because Sophia is only in the applicant stage, we won't know a lot of information that the Batten team is leveraging now with AdvisorLink. So we're gonna actually start feeding all of her current student uh, record by following her as early on as the application process. And I'm gonna do that by collecting her data. So simple biodemographic details, all customizable fields that she likely has submitted either through RSVPs for events or from her application, or maybe just from calling Courtney and Courtney getting to know her and adding more rich data so that as she's on those marketing cloud journeys, the more information we know about her, the more we can customize and personalize that experience. I can see on the right-hand side that she does have an application already, and I can leverage Einstein, which is layering in our out-of-the-box artificial intelligence to help make predictions about Sophia. So here we're learning that she only has a 55% chance of enrolling if she were to be admitted. And the number one predictor causing that is her incomplete checklist items which makes sense because we know that her application status uh, is only 83% complete. We're gonna come back to this application in a moment, but first I just wanna give a quick tour of other information that we do know about Sophia at the time of her application, because again, we've been tracking her and monitoring her for a while. Under my communications tab, I can see any calls or emails that we've had back and forth. I can also see what marketing, if I jump to engagement, what marketing cloud emails and content was Sophia getting and how is she individually interacting with that content? So here I can just see a list of all of the emails that she's received through those automated campaigns. I can see whether she's opened them and I can even drill down into each of these emails to see if she's clicked any of the links and which link specifically she's clicked on. So if Sophia does call me or Courtney 
and ask questions, I can quickly navigate to her record and see if she's even opening and digesting the content we're sending. I can upgrade to sending SMS text messages or adding a chatbot to Noah's community that we saw to help him not just leverage those knowledge articles, but also use a chatbot to get real-time answers 24-7. We also saw that Noah had the ability to submit cases or forms, which come in the form of questions on the CRM side for staff to answer. So here we can see all of the cases uh, that that Noah and Sophia may have submitted over time. Because her, in her application, Sophia identified any past institutions or relationships that she may have with individuals and organizations. So right away, I can see that she graduated from Trailhead Academy High School. I can see all of the accounts and organizations that she's affiliated with, not just at UVA, but possibly she had an internship or maybe Sophia um, you know, was st uh, a student athlete or part of a student organization on campus. Every student and applicant is going to have what we call a one-to-many relationship with the education institution. We wanna track and be able to report off of all of that rich data. But I know the star of this demo is going to be drilling down into Admissions Connect to see how Courtney and her team can jump into these applications and help improve their day. So here I jumped right into Sophia applicants application to the public policy and leadership program. I can see in my highlights panel again, that she's only at 83% complete on her checklist. Ideally that same community and student portal that Noah was in, that's the same portal that Sophia applied through and all of the checklist items that she needs to complete are going to live there. I'm going to scroll down through the checklist and as Rachel, I'm very concerned about her incomplete items because I certainly want to help Sophia make sure her application is complete so that it can move on through the process and we can get her hopefully in admitted and enrolled. I see she has two incomplete items, only one of which is required, which is her official transcript. I'm going to pop open this link and just take a look at her official high school transcript from Trailhead Academy. There are many things I can do with this transcript, leveraging the embed PDF reader. So if it came in upside down or sideways, I can rotate it. I can zoom in and out and I can even search for maybe her GPA or any other courses that might be prerequisites that I just wanna see and make sure that she has. And lastly, I have the ability to accept or reject this transcript. Depending on your process, you can use this accept and reject button as a way to verify the authenticity um, of, of your transcript requirement. If I were to select the reject button, I have a customizable pick list where I can let Sophia know what was wrong with this document. Perhaps she accidentally uploaded the wrong one where she took a picture of it with her mobile and it was just too blurry and unreadable for me. In addition to the pick list, I can actually leave a comment and based on what I put in this comment can trigger a notification back to Sophia so that she can be alerted exactly why I rejected the document and maybe I can give her some helpful tips of what she needs to do to upload the correct one. But I think we can all agree this transcript looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and accept it. Once I accept it, you might notice that her application checklist jumped to 100% complete. Even though she still has a writing supplement is incomplete, because it's not required, it's not going to hold up my uh, ability to move her through the admissions process and get her application reviewed by the admissions committee. All of these checklist items here are driven by action plans, which are a unique feature of Admissions Connect. Action plans allow you to create those task and document checklist items and automatically assign them to every applicant based on either their program or degree they're applying for, the term, or any other biodemographical information you learn about them. If Sophia was an international student, she likely would have an action plan assigned to her that would require additional visa-related items and document uploads. I can also add action plans on the fly 
if I wanted to for Sophia. And if I wanted to jump into her transcript action plan, I can see that that requires two items. We want her to upload her unofficial document, and then we do want her to upload her official document at the right time. But on the fly, I always have the ability to add an item to her. So maybe we just got off the phone and I know she's a great candidate for a scholarship, but we don't require a scholarship essay. I might go above and beyond and just encourage her to submit a supplemental scholarship essay to her application so that when she does get evaluated and reviewed, she's going to be heavily considered for a scholarship. So again, just having the ability to on the fly add ad hoc tasks and or full action plans that could be made up of multiple checklist items is really, really great. I can do that, of course, on the individual level or I can automate that and do that at scale. If I jump and navigate over to the right hand side of the screen, you might notice I have the ability to continue my review. That's because I started reviewing her application last night. Because remember, I'm wearing many, many hats. So not only do I prepare applications, support students through their checklists and the whole process, but I also review and make decisions, uh, recommendations. Because Sophia applied uh, to the fall um, term, I have automatically set up assignments so that three reviewers on the committee will review this application right alongside with me. If I hit continue review, I'm going to jump right into the review component. On the left hand side, you might notice it's kind of like a table of contents and it's really highlighting all of those action plans and checklist items that we saw Rachel navigate as she was confirming that her application was complete. This allows a reviewer to actually navigate and jump around. So if I did want to jump straight to that official transcript, I don't have to scroll and look for the document. I can always leverage this navigation on the left-hand side. But let's start at the top because one of the really cool features of Admissions Connect for all of our application readers is the ability to leverage what we call a sing single endless scroll. No matter how many uh, fields and data and records that are created and documents that are uploaded to make this application complete, all of that is going to be sourced right here all together in this endless scroll so that I don't have to click in and out and around to different documents to just evaluate this application. So I can see she has a number of uh, recommendations uploaded. She has both her official and unofficial transcript. She even uploaded her SAT scores. She never uploaded the writing supplement, but because it wasn't required, that's okay. And as I navigate through the application and I want to evaluate it based on the data that I have customized and chosen to see as part of my review, I also have a customized review component all the way on the right-hand side where I can make my admissions decision where I would like to recommend Sophia for admittance. Part of this is evaluating her motivation what are her career goals? And that might have been a part of an essay that we required where I could read and learn more about her. And then I have the option to add comments, but these comments were already here when I clicked into this application. That's because I started it last night, like I mentioned. Anything I do in this review component is going to be automatically saved to uh, Sophia's application. So if I were to forget about this and walk away, I don't have to start my review over again. It will auto save all of the things that I might put here. But in addition to these two pick lists and this open text field, this is a completely customizable review component. So perhaps I have a very strict scoring rubric or I want to evaluate other things and characteristics about this application. You can customize all of the fields that you see here for each reviewer and even have it change by program or term or by student type. I'm going to go ahead and submit my admit recommendation, but she still has two more reviewers to get through. At the time the other two reviewers finish their review and also recommend Sophia for admittance, one of two things can happen. One, Rachel or Courtney and her team could um, 
you know, get eyes and human eyes on those lists of uh, applications and then manually trigger acceptances just so that they can manual intervention to make sure everything looks good. But the other thing that can happen is we could automate this process. If all three reviewers recommend her for admittance and Rachel has already verified that her application and documents are authentic and complete, then we can trigger an email to go to Sophia. It could be in the form of an email, this notification. It could be a beautiful PDF acceptance letter that gets put back on her applicant community that we saw Noah navigating so that she can print it out and hang it up on a refrigerator. But no matter what type of notification you choose to trigger to Sophia to let her know she's admitted, we always wanna drive her back to that community. Because that community, as we saw from that awesome demo, that current students, once they're accepted, already have access to. We want them to keep going there as their single source of truth, as they have from the time they applied, as they go through the onboarding and enrollment process, and of course, to support them as current students. So that was my quick sneak peek demo of Admissions Connect and hopefully what the vision uh, will be for the Batten team as part of their next step on their sales first journey. So with that, I do want to make sure that we have time for questions and double check if there's anything that I may have missed um, in going on in the Zoom while I've been presenting. Yeah, thank you so much, Kirsten. Uh, and thank you, Batten team as, as well. So we do have about 10 minutes for questions. Uh, go ahead and uh, use that Q&A button on your screen and we will get to as many of these as, as we can. But um, yeah, I just wanna echo uh, your, your closing statement, Kirsten, just so exciting to see, you know, what does a, what does a single source of truth for both students and staff look like, you know, when we start thinking about connecting that admissions process, everything that staff learn about admissions, and then being able to carry that forward uh, with the student to onboarding and then on to when, when they are a student. So uh, because we were just talking admissions connect, I'll start with a question uh, for you, Kirsten. Uh, and this is around, um, um, well, I'll, I'll read it exactly. Messaging and a chat bot are part of another product, not admissions connect. So, so yeah, question is, is messaging and chatbots, are those part of Admissions Connect? That is a great question. And it's kind of a trick question because the answer is yes and no. Um, so chatbots, uh, yes, are a part of Admissions Connect. Um, we leverage chatbots through uh, the community or through your website. And as part of our summer release, we are actually offering all of our Admissions Connect customers a chatbot dialogue that is pre-built for them and it will allow applicants whether you put that again that chatbot on a public facing website or you want to put that chatbot in that community that no one sophia have to log into and self authenticate through it will allow them to check in on their application status among other tasks and those chatbot dialogues if anyone on this webinar has used our chatbots or seen a demo or a training or taken a trailhead module it's incredibly easy to build out chatbot dialogue, but we really wanted to help our, our customers, you know, just be able to install Admissions Connect, install that chatbot and just hit the ground running, um, you know, right away. So yes, there is a customized RNA chatbot dialogue coming this summer with this product. Um, for those that say, you know, I don't have a, a chatbot available to me, you can buy it as an add-on. Um, if you want. And that depends, um, again, on if you're a current customer, what, what your licensing looks like. But I think it's safe to say that it is part of the product. Yeah. Thanks, Kirsten. I uh, want to turn uh, back to the Batten team now. Uh, Diane, we had a question coming in uh, around which SIS you use. Uh, Christine, what is it? <laughs> it's PeopleSoft. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. All right. Um, very customized by UVA IT folks as well. So, excellent. Uh, thank you. Um, maybe uh, let's let's direct this question to to Courtney. Um, and so this question seems to be around um, 
um, making the best use of campus tours. And I, I know you've pivoted to, to virtual. So uh, yeah, the question is how to make the best engagement to attract students while making campus tours. So um, we are a smaller school. Uh, we actually only have one building, but ultimately we're a part of uh, the only college campus that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So once we shifted to this kind of virtual space, we were able to lean on some of the things that UVA has put together in terms of virtual tours um, that are both historical and, and relevant to, to students who are looking at our school. Uh, that's not the only um, not the only thing that we have utilized that students can use on, on their own time. Uh, we have historically offered as well FaceTime tours with some of our current students, um, which does make it a little bit more customizable uh, that the student, current student can connect with the prospective student, uh, ask them kind of, you know, what do you want to see? I can walk around and show you where the library is, uh, you know, how long it takes to walk from a classroom to Garrett Hall. So that's typically how we've handled uh, those. Um, those FaceTime tour. I like it. Yeah. Who mm -hmm. would have thought that we'd be doing FaceTime tours uh, a year and a half ago? So that's, that's awesome. Uh, Diane, turning to you again, um, the question is, is your portal built on a Salesforce community? Yes, it is. It's um, both the faculty, staff, and the student portal are all built in Salesforce community, and we maintain it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Diane, follow-up question just to that. You know, when you talk about those FAQs, how are you doing those? Through knowledge. Um, we're... I've been using Salesforce a long time and I really knew solutions really well and that that's on the way out and knowledge is the new FAQ so I had to relearn that part. So yes, we're using knowledge and we're sorting them. We have them for faculty and staff also. We have a whole lot. We pro I looked it up today. We have 498 knowledge articles between faculty, staff and students and they're just a lot of them are just successful on the back end of how do I how do I do this thing that I do every semester? Or, um, you know, how do you ask for this from the UVA? Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to turn back to Kirsten because I just believe probably based on when this question came in, it relates to Admissions Connect. Uh, and so the question, Kirsten, is how customizable are the checklist requirements? Oh, I might invite Courtney to answer because I know she's constantly uh, leveraging success plans and sending checklist items out. Yeah, so um, in terms of the, the mechanics, I know limited in my Salesforce knowledge that I do have, uh, it's extremely customizable based off of uh, the different attributes. I have different success plans kind of built in based off of which program they're in, if they're international, if they're military, if they're in-state, out-of-state, um, are they an early applicant? Are they an off-cycle applicant? Uh, so, you know, I've been able to utilize that in order to ultimately um, implement the success plans. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see kind of the, the different functionalities within Admissions Connect as we are gonna go in and um, look through um, applications to have the rubrics really align within the system as well. Um, and I'm excited to, to uh, take what we currently have, which is the new student checklist uh, and, and implement, implement it uh, even forward, uh, looking at the different things that are required instead of just having it listed uh, on our website uh, of things to do, that they'll actually be able to, to check things off themselves. All right. Well, great. Thank you. Uh, and I know we are coming up at time. Mohammed, you asked about uh, just ways to get students to join the, the university as an admissions specialist. So I, um, you know, very broad broad question, I think that's um, really, really speaks to the power of a lot of the tools that have been presented uh, today, just, you know, trying to uh, get to know that uh, the, the current student, where they are, what they're expecting from you, um, and using the technology and the, uh, the, um, the methods of communication that they prefer. So, um, with that, I think it's uh, we're at the hour, and I want to say thank you again to UVA Batten for being such amazing uh, partners on this this webinar. Um, kudos to everything you're you're doing. I, I never cease to be impressed by the ways that that you're using uh, not only the Salesforce platform but how you're leveraging change management 
uh, within the Batten School because uh, as, as all of us on this webinar know, I, I used to work in higher ed, uh, change management is uh, uh, you know half of that piece. So uh, kudos to Diane and all the amazing work to bring everyone uh, on board with this incredible vision. So with that, we'll bring this to a close, but I do last but not least want to invite you uh, to register for the salesforce.org education summit. And that is coming up on June 16th. This is a free virtual event. Uh, all sorts of great speakers, uh, tons of great breakouts about uh, Salesforce technology, um, not just for recruiting and admissions in the student experience, but also in advancement, uh, tracks for CIOs, everyone. So check that out on our website, salesforce.org, and we hope to see you there. And so with that, I will say a final thank you to ACRO uh, for the amazing partnership. And uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. And we look forward to seeing you at Summit. Goodbye, everyone.